Throughout the growing season on a wide variety of crops, Brian and I get a lot of questions about foliar fertilization. We wanted to tackle some of those today. To begin with, the number one question is, what do I put on? How do I know what to put on? Do I just look at my soil test? Should I do plant tissue analysis? Should I look at how many total nutrients the plant's gonna need? Um, yes, yes, and yes. So usually what we're doing on our farm is we are doing a fair amount of soil testing and then we'll do some plant tissue analysis. And what we do with plant tissue analysis is we suggest going out there in at least a couple spots in a field and sampling every single week. And then you can see, well, how are we doing over a period of time? Now, as we've done that over many years on our farm, we have a much better understanding. Like for us, for example, boron was a major issue. So now we know, hey, there's a pretty good chance that boron is going to pay. We have tried it before as a foliar, it's worked. We have looked at our soil tests, we're low. We've looked at our tissue tests, we're low. So all these types of things start to tie together and correlate, and that's usually how we figure out what we're going to do. But yes, we do absolutely want you to do some plant tissue analysis, and that's probably number one when we're looking at foliar feeding. The good thing is all this testing Brian's talking about doesn't take a lot of time and doesn't cost a lot of money. But what we're finding is that folks who say, you know, one time this foliar worked really well and I did the same exact thing the next day on a different field and it didn't work very well. Well, this could be the reason why, because we're seeing different needs throughout the field in different areas of the field. So for example, if you look at your variable rate fertilizer maps that you're putting on for soil fertility, Oftentimes we see the foliar needs being a little bit different in parts of the field or certainly from field to field. One of the other things we learned from a lot of the really high yield farmers out there is to throw some fulvic acid together with the foliar fertilizer. The reason why, at least this is what all the really high yield guys have told us, is it helps get that foliar fertilizer better into the plant. So we've been doing more of that, had a little bit better response. Now, as I say all this, I will just tell you, for us, I don't love foliar feeding as my number one or number two option in terms of putting fertilizer out. I would like to treat the soil. We own most of the ground that we farm. I'm looking at farming it over the long term. So I wanna fix the ground and make everything good. And then there's less need for the foliar fertilizer later on. There's more need for foliar fertilizer if let's say you're renting the ground, all you're doing is banding a little bit of fertilizer, just enough to get you by, and then you go, oh, I'm having a pretty good year. I better give this a little more shot of whatever it is, nitrogen or boron or sulfur, something like that. And you certainly can't make up for this big deficiency with your foliar fertilizer. And the other thing that I would say is this, if you do put quite a bit of foliar fertilizer on, some of them can burn the leaves. So you wanna make sure that you're talking to your fertilizer dealer about, all right, what's the safety factor here? Because I don't wanna go out and burn my crop trying to put on this foliar. I just wanna put a foliar on that's gonna get into my crop and help my crop not hurt it. One of the other things I'll throw out here is try to be early rather than late. Just as a quick example, iron deficiency chlorosis in soybeans. You can go out there and foliar feed more iron onto the crop after it has already turned very yellow. You can green it up by doing that. But the problem is you've already lost a lot of yield and usually the yield gain you get from greening it up doesn't pay for the treatment. So more than anything, what we're after here is to not only make the crop look good, but we have to have enough yield to make all this stuff pay. The other thing, Brian, is just getting good coverage on the crop. If a foliar is something that you want to get on the leaves, smaller droplets often work better. But again, as we get into the hotter part of the summer, we do have to be a little concerned about evaporation. So you need a big enough droplet that it's going to make it to the leaf, and you need to get good coverage down through that canopy as much as you can to get good absorption as well. Last thing I'll throw out is this. Years ago, when I was talking to one of the best people in the entire world in terms of working with plant growth hormones, he said, you farmers just throw a whole bunch of nutrients out there and you think everything's gonna work great. And I go, uh, yeah, isn't that what we're supposed to do? And he said, well, think about it like human digestion. Okay, if you eat a great big meal, if you had no hormones and enzymes and other stuff working on that, um, what kind of shape would you be in? And I'm like, oh, okay, so how about plants? And he said, same thing there. He said, with a lot of the really good foliar fertilizers now, 
either you'll find plant growth hormones in there or you should maybe consider adding plant growth hormones along with it to help the plant use those nutrients, not just get them there, but actually use them inside the plant to turn that into more yield. To wrap things up, we've done a lot of testing with different time of day, different products, different crops, all these things on our farm, and we've had a whole bunch of failures. We've figured out almost all the ways that you can fail at this, but what we have figured out that does work is taking good soil samples, correlating that with our plant tissue test data to try to figure out what our crop actually needs, and then try to identify the right nutrients and the right products that have available forms of those nutrients to get into our plant. Uh, Brian and I were talking off camera about well, what hasn't worked and Brian said remember our early days we were trying to get phosphorus in because our crop was short of phosphorus. We had no luck getting phosphorus in foliar. Our only luck getting phosphorus into the plant has been uptake through the roots. But that's not true with many of the micronutrients. We've had good luck with micros trying to push them in through the foliage. So do a little bit of research yourself and look at some of these other failures that have been out there in trials that haven't worked so you don't make those same mistakes as well. And it's not just micronutrients you can get into the plant, even nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, you can absolutely get those into the foliage and into the plant. So there are a lot of different ways you can go. Again, just look at soil tests and tissue tests and try to figure out exactly what you need on your farm. Well, one of the things that you always need on your farm for top yields is good weed control. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. <music>